Hello and welcome to Let's Play for Comp 3218 Game Design and Development at the University of Southampton. I am Adrian Chapman, a lecturer in the course, and with me today is... Uh, you are Daniel Marino, one of the demonstrators in the course. Excellent. For this first uh, coursework, the students were asked to create a game that had uh, two key components. One is it had to have a very clear core dynamic, and two, it had to have and demonstrate level design and tutorials. So let's get on to our first game. Yeah. All right. Our first game today is Alien Breakout. Uh, so I suppose I'll click on new game. Uh, OK. Let's see. Oh, wow. Uh, WSD. OK. I can okay. jump. And there's a pickup. Short oh. slave. A mouse. Yeah, OK. Oh, okay. wow. And I don't really have anything else to do, but you know, there's this thing here. Should you shoot that? Shoot it! Shoot it! Come on! Yeah. Oh, and it opens the door, so you can't do, you can't go forward until you executed and shown proficiency. Yeah. They will complete. It gives me a time collected uh, cogs, I guess, which we didn't yeah. have in this. Uh, oh, wait. Yeah, that's the. The ship part. part. Okay. Use one. I didn't shot. even see a ship part. Ah, so it's, uh, I suppose those, uh, I think the ship part was the thing I shot. Ah. Yeah, and we have, I guess, for if you complete the level in a certain time frame and use a certain number of shots, it gives you a more... Which Better is, score of some sort. Yeah, replayability. Okay. okay, let's find the next level. So, oh, I have... Oh, there's a cog up on the left. Yeah, let's see. Ah. Oh. Wait, we didn't get the cog. Oh, yeah, because I was in standing you on the door. In the door, yeah. And at the same time... Okay, let's try this. Okay. Okay, door is open. Now can we get the uh, cog? Ah, uh, okay. So I have a limited number of shots. And I yep. think it's the, depending on the bounces, it uh, so it can do at most four bounces. And yeah, I, I saw that before. It looked like the ball faded out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh. Now we have bricks, which I suppose you know there's nothing else left to do but shoot them. Uh... Oh. <laughs> Got the key. Perfect. Well done. Well done. Uh, okay. Yeah. So we've learned a lot now. We've got different uh, pieces in here just so we can collect. We've got bricks that you could break. You've got a key to open the door. You've got cogs to collect. You can jump, aim, shoot. Um, and you have choices about whether to just open the door and run and leave the cog. Yeah. Um, and try to preserve shots. Or... And try to preserve shots. Oh, there's a question. Do your shots get reset level by level? So it looks like you had, I think you had four left on the last one, and then you used some this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's okay. for each level a different a new A new set of shots. Okay, Ooh, a moving platform. Moving piece. Can you jump on that? I think Did so. Did you get it without even a shot? Look at that. I'm, okay. I'm scared to be <laughs> cursed by Crushed. it, so. Okay. Okay, Very yeah. Nice. Next one. Ah, so I wait, if, if I you, fall. If you fall you can't get out, can you? I don't think so. Oh. Yeah. I can Can you can you can you shoot yourself out? No, it doesn't look it. Almost. It, yeah. I don't I don't know if this is now, there had on been purpose. on other screens, press R to restart. So yeah, once you get to zero shots year. left, you're allowed to restart. I think you can restart even... Yeah, without... Hey! You've already learned. Okay, good. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, the jump is... <laughs> Alright, while well, you try to master this level, I'm going to start 
by going through uh, some of the marking criteria for this. We're going to start at quality. And the first piece we're going to talk about is presentation, cool. which includes information design, graphics, and audio. So audio, we can actually hear both that there's kind of complementary um, audio or music, but there's also kind of appealing effects, right? The door opens, I hear something change. You get a cog, something yeah. changes. Uh, each thing you do, every time you shoot, there's everything yeah, there's, has its... Uh, the pickups have sounds, the shooting, like, yeah, very nice. Yep. So I think officially we're we're an excellent category for that. Um, Definitely, yeah. All right. So the next piece that we're looking at is um, graphics. So we're looking for consistent and effective and appealing graphics. So I'm not sure if we're in consistent and effective. We're definitely consistent and effective. Um, the graphics themselves are simplistic, but I actually find them perfectly appealing. I, I love the little laser beam that has um, a pointer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, they, they are fairly, fairly basic, so I'm not sure that we're all the way up into excellence, but, um, but they're definitely, I think, halfway between good and excellent. Yeah, they, they definitely fit. Uh... It does fit very nicely. Yeah. All right, um, moving on now to um, information design. So uh, there's actually a lot of information design in this in this work. So yeah. actually on the screen, you were just and we'll get to that in a minute. The information design here, it has the number of cogs you've chosen. It has the shots left, the timer, that how long you're taking. Um, and when you run out of shots, it reminds mm. you that R resets. So that's really good information design um, in here. And then the on let's stay on this board for just a moment. Oops, never mind. It went on. Um, the board between, where we have, um, oh, where we have how well you're doing. So three shots or less. What it was completed in your stats. All of this is. Um, uh, I think it's I think nice. very clear. Yeah, Very nicely cool. communicated. Yep. So, are we clear? All key information is shown clearly. I think we're. I think we're easily there. Yeah, I, I can't think of anything. You know that you could add, maybe some minor right. thing, but it's pretty much everything there already. Yep. So then I think the next, the next piece that we come to is. Um, we are now looking at meaningful play, mechanics, controls, and bugs. Let's do the easy one. Let's go to bugs. Um, so the game is the game is um, playable, yeah. and I have not seen any obvious bugs. I think for this particular game, the question that we come in is complexity. Mm. Um, so. Well, there's, uh, let, let's see, so there's the movement, jumping, shooting with the mouse and all that. You have the yeah. moving platforms, the bouncing of the projectile, the you destructible platform, so it's quite a bit... It I is think. actually very complex. So, so an excellence is a game is reasonably complex and there are no obvious bugs, and prizeworthy is game is of higher complexity and there are no obvious bugs. And I, I think I might be willing to go halfway between excellent and prizeworthy for this one, mostly because of that bouncing ball. Yeah, yeah, actually. <laughs> and it feels really nice uh, playing with that. Yeah, it does. You had to think through kind of your angles and the shots, haven't you, for this? Yeah. Um, okay, so, so now we've gotten that one over with let's talk a bit more around meaningful play um, and we're going to talk about mechanics so we actually listed off quite a few mechanics I think that we are um, definitely in a wide set of complementary mechanics so we we listed them already you've got your movement your shooting your aiming uh, you can break walls you can pick up cogs or doors um, and they are different, right? So, so even though you shoot the ball and that would both break and pick up a cog or a key, um, 
Now we've got something with a platform that you can jump onto and use the platform to move. So we have a wide range at this point and they are complementary. Um, I'm, I'm not willing to go all the way to complex yet. I actually think that they are wide range and, and complementary. Yeah, yeah, I um, mean, yeah, there's, they're definitely at that level. Yeah. So then the next question becomes controls. And now, Yohan, you're the one who's going to have to inform us on this one. Um, you've got your mouse, you've got WASDI. Is this uh, reasonably intuitive and smooth usable controls? I think so. It, and the way they're introduced is really, you know, it's just WASD, move, and then shoot with the mouse and that's it so right. it doesn't feel yeah, yeah it feels quite uh intuitive good good um for our listeners there is a dog in the room who's about to bark <laughs> okay Uh, yeah, so it feels, yeah, the controls are perfectly fine, I think, and the jumping feels good, and, okay, let me see. Well, the dog's barking fit has passed, <laughs> so we're going to pick up now with uh, talking about level design. And so what we're going to first talk about, well, the two things in level design that we're going to talk about is goals, risks, reward, and then pacing. Um, so within our level design right now, um, goals, risks, and rewards. I do think there's quite a bit of that because there's a lot of, you know, choices where do I go try to go fast and only get the uh, key for the door or do I, you know, take my time, plan my shots, try to get the cogs and maybe lose on time a bit. So I, I agree with you. You do have a lot of agency in this. And I think the only question that I am struggling with in terms of that goals, risks, rewards is I am not clear what the reward is for any of these. So stay right here for a moment. Yeah. So for this, you have two gears and you've collected all the ship parts. It says whether you short four shots or less and you've completed in 10 minutes Second. or whatever that is. Yeah. Um, and so the question though, I think I think one of the things that they might have fallen into a trap here that they have tried to allow the player to play it in any way they want, right? That they can choose to collect all ship parts so they can choose to play for time, but there's no reward. Mm. So, so there's a goal and a risk and the goal, the user sets the goal and there's a risk to how they play, whether they get it or not, but I'm not sure what the reward is. I, I do wonder, so in the ending, does it say, so it says I've collected 12 parts, the number of shots, and how long it took. Yeah, see, yeah. in this case, it, it reports, right? So, so yes, you, the player, can choose that you're going to collect all the parts, or you're going to shoot the minimum number of times, or you're going to go fastest. But there is no reward mm. associated with any of these. Um, and so I think it falls down a little bit on that one. So what would be different? So let's let's put the spin on the thing that I would love to have seen on this is that if you collected um, all of the parts in a certain time, and it didn't matter how many shots you used, um, you were escaped the alien and blasted off the moon, right? But yeah, if exactly. You, if you collected all of the parts, um, but didn't do it in a certain amount of time, maybe you got to blast off the moon, but you you carried a disease back to Earth. You know, like you got infected in that yeah, time or something. Yeah, yeah. Right. There has to be some kind of a, a attention here to do this. Yeah. Why am I Why am I collecting those? Why things? are you doing this in these amount of times? Exactly. So, so I think I think you have a. I think they have a clear and coherent set of goals and risks, and I think they have an incoherent set of rewards. And so, um, on the on the on the risks and um, 
uh, on the risks and goals, I think they're up in in good. Um, I think in the rewards, they're down in poor. So I'm I'm actually going to put them kind of in the halfway mark, which is about somewhere between pass and satisfactory for this particular uh, one. Yeah. Now, pacing. Let's talk about pacing. Um, pacing is is talking around. Um, does the tension rise over time? Um, is it flat? Is it balanced? And unfortunately, I think in this game they 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 um, they're flat. I, I mean, they're they're because we don't have that reward. Um, you just kind of go through the things and you go through the door and you're done, aren't you? Mm, uh, but at the same time, they do. Uh, get a bit the, the the levels get a bit harder. You're, that is true. The the levels do get harder. So, so we in won't that say sense, that it's completely flat. Spacing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we won't say that it's a completely flat. Um, we will say though that possibly um, there is variations in tension, but no coherent pattern over time. Well, I think we're we're probably in that range. All right, so. If we move on then to uh, the very next piece, which is looking at um, the tutorial. At this point, yeah. we need to talk about how the the player is kind of taught. Is it a gradual explanation of gameplay and controls, somewhat aligned with play? I think we're better than that. I think we've got a gradual explanation of gameplay and controls that's fully aligned with play. Yeah, yeah. So it's slowly you know the first level is literally the main mechanics like movement and shooting but then they also introduce stuff like breakable bo blocks moving platforms and yeah so it's gradual and i think it fits in the you know yeah game and and the pacing as well i i do too so at this point now um what we need to do is we need to talk about, about the core dynamic. What do we think the core dynamic of this game is? Uh, I think, personally, it feels like spatial reasoning. Because there's I think a lot it of... does, too. Mostly yeah. because of that gun and the, the bouncing balls. And hopefully they said the same. <laughs> they did say the same. Um, there is a slight element to collection on this because of the key in these oh, gears, but, yeah. that's, but that's okay. I think... They, they said spatial reasoning, and I agree that it does, those balls definitely <laughs> make it feel like spatial reasoning. It does feel like uh, the collection is in support of the... the... Yes, the collection is in support of that spatial reasoning. So I think we're in um, a clear core dynamic that is supported by an integrated set of mechanics. Um, quite clearly. Yeah. So, what we're next going to talk about is their feedback so as part of every um, build of a game they are given feedback as part of their work um, and we asked them to tell us what the feedback was how they responded to it um, so we're gonna read what they said um, think about the progression and introduction of mechanics um, and so they did mechanics through a series of manageable levels that slowly introduces yes they did it exactly and then the second piece of feedback was make it clear that door triggers affects the door. Basically, that key thing that we've been calling a key. Yeah. Oh, it was a key card. Um, so um, they made the uh, had a background arrow asset as a sign to our players that they should put their focus on the key card for progression. You know, it's interesting. I'm not sure that they needed to do that after the first um, after the very first tutorial level. I actually think that was right there where we learned that that was a key card because mm. um, the door didn't open until we got to it. So I think I think it's very clear that it's a uh, that it's a key. So um, I think that they have um, taken on the feedback. It's been interpreted and addressed, and the changes I think were successful. Yeah. All right. So, um, the that fulfills our um, our 
play of this game. And I think we are on to the very next one. Excellent. On to our next game of Batch 4, God of Realms. So it starts off, open our golden gates to become God of Realms. <laughs> Quite a, <laughs> you know, big title. Uh, At and... least we know what we're supposed to do. We're going to open <laughs> yeah. some golden gates. <laughs> yeah, so type start to begin the game. So I cannot click this. I need to type with my keyboard. Okay. Start like that. Okay, so we start off by arrow keys to move. Okay, can I fall? Okay. Uh, so there's nothing else to do, and there's like a ghost. Yeah. Looks a little scary. Says, I bet you have to type. Yeah. Type it. Release. What happens if you type it incorrectly? Oh, okay, so. Instead of saying open, type, you know. Yeah, yeah, it just doesn't continue. So It just doesn't progress. Okay. Yeah. Or I can try it on a... So, I guess. So, so. Yeah, it doesn't restart. It, it continues like that. So, shelter. Uh, go. And you can see how the ground slowly... Yeah. And over on the right, you're kind of making the levels on something go up there. I'm not entirely sure yeah. what. So if I type pass, there is some existing chaos in the Earth realm. Release souls from Earth to regain ability to build bridges. Until then, you cannot build bridges. <laughs> okay. Oh my. I bet you have to type resume. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a really <laughs> cute. Uh... Okay, so you've got to wander around and you're. You're typing in lots of words. Earth realm acquired. And I now I suppose I can. What about uh, the other way? Because there was that one on the other side too. Yeah. Okay. So I guess the minimap you can see in the minimap oh, here. Oh yes. I, I suppose this would be fire realm. Yeah. This would be water, and this is earth. And I don't know about this, but we'll get there, I suppose. Can you fall off the bridge? Uh, no. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, it, it seems like <laughs> just, you do, but... Just out of curiosity, you know? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... And on the minimap, again, you can see... I don't know if you can see, but I can see small dots here, which are the oh, souls. Oh, see it. Yes. And I guess you can try to corner them or go towards them. What happens if one touches you? Let's see. Um, you just go through it. Yeah. Okay. Let's okay. See. Now, is this is this just that they all exist, or can they run out? Like, could you ever not get to a level because you haven't typed fast enough? There's a lot uh, of oxygen here. Huh. I... Do you remember those typing games when you were a kid? My mother used to make me do all these typing games. <laughs> typing wizard was my favorite. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely inspired. In a mm -hmm. sense with those, um, and I know that uh, oh, I see. the water realm has a very uh, complicated word that I don't remember, but we'll get there. Uh, oxygen, and I can open. Yeah, in the meantime, and my the I think that's the last so. So, oh, realm problem. Oh, there is some chaos in the earth realm. Some wandering souls are back. If you lose control of the realm, it might affect your ability to build bridge. Uh oh. Okay. So I need to Run go back, back there. Oh, and, and look, actually, to... you've got a little white back in the in the up in your right hand corner. Um, aircon, huh? Uh, oh, up no, in your right hand corner you can see oh there's a lot of souls down in earth better run 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 okay so now I'm seeing the tension actually I'm kind of enjoying this tension oh no earth is <laughs> earth is going yeah Woo! and the and, uh, fire arm gives you speed as a, an ability so I'm quite faster now excellent oh but now lightning uh, your your fire realm is, is going out uh, of control let me go there and fix it quickly it does start getting uh, aircon. Aircon. 
Aircon. There's a there's a lot of aircon here. I'm a fan. <laughs> what the... Oh goodness. Um, okay, well you keep going back and forth. Um, it looks like Earth is about to go out of control again. Yeah. I'll so leave. I wonder if you're ever going to get out of this uh, this loop here. I almost wonder if um, if uh, somebody has has knows the optimal route through this, and they game tested knowing the perfect way through, and. Uh, Yeah, let's see the water one. Yeah. All right, you keep playing. I'm going to start back on our um, our, our marking criteria. So we've got quality, which includes uh, presentation and meaningful play. Uh, within presentation, we're going to talk about audio, graphics, and information design. So audio, I hear both music, and I, every time you kill a soul, release a soul, you use a nice little bing. Yep. Um, yep. So I think you've got some complimentary and appealing effects and music. Yeah, and there's also, I think, when your realm was under attack, or let me try to build. Ah, okay. Uh, and, yeah, the and ding, ding. that was so, yeah. Yep. All right. Um, let's see. We've also got graphics. So I think we've got consistent and effective graphics. Um, they're fairly simple. Um, but, you know, I think they actually are, for what we've got here, they're appealing. Um, yeah, mostly it's... Oh, that's the word. Bo bo Go for buoyancy. <laughs> it's almost ready. I am final one, and I'm there. Yeah, so the graphics, yeah, as you said, simple, but they work. Oh, Absolutely. Um, so I think uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is kind of uh, information design. So in this case, uh, we've got a few key pieces of information. We've got the, the little mini map on the left. Um, and we've got up on the right, we've got the level of lost souls in each of the realms that we've made it to. Um, we have the information that we have to type above each soul. Um, actually, what's that bar on the left? There's like a bar kind of hanging out on the left down here. What uh, is this that? One. Yeah. I think that's the amount of uh, the amount of the realm that I captured uh -huh. or something like that. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, you can see it go up the more souls I that you release. Yeah. Okay. Um, interestingly, I think that, that weirdly, I feel like that might be overlapped with those little icons up on the upper right. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll keep going with that. So, so there's a, a question then about, uh, there's a question about whether that, uh, is a needed, oh, now that bar is turned red. So I'm still not clear. Oh, it's what realm you're in and how many souls are there. Mm -hmm. So why is that bar there? Um, particularly when we've already got this information up in the upper right. I'm not sure that it adds anything. Mm. So, um, I do think all key information is shown, and it's done clearly. I I worry a little bit about that bar. Um, I think it it's overkill or, or uh, redundant information, but I'm not going to detract too much from having that. Let's talk about um, meaningful play in this case, which includes mechanics, controls, and bugs. So first, let's go for bugs. I mean, I've already asked you to try to run off the board, and you <laughs> were unable to. So I think um, I haven't seen any bugs in this. And I think it's reasonably complex between the typing, the moving of the ghost, the moving of you, and, and these bridges being connected and unconnected. Does that feel about right? Uh, yeah. It's... Okay. Yeah. Um, how do those controls feel? Are they usable? There's the typing. So there's the typing. Are you moving with the mouse or are you moving with WASD? I'm assuming it's the mouse. Uh, so in this case, no, uh, I'm moving with the arrow keys. So oh, my arrow keys. Okay, right hand is on the arrow keys. And when I get close to a ghost, I 
change my hand to the keyboard so I can type. So it's right. like not a big uh, a movement. Like the arrow keys are quite close to the keyboard. Yep. So it is it is you it is usable and intuitive then. Yeah, in um, this it's... case they've made a good choice to not use the mouse because that would be I guess less intuitive because you have to you know the distance between the mouse and the keyboard is bigger. Yes, that's it's exactly why I was asking. I was a little worried about that. Um, all right, so we're going to say it's usable and intuitive set of controls. Very nice. Um, and then the final piece that we're going to talk about in this category is um, the metrics. So let's see, the metrics you have, you can walk around, um, you can type soul names. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, the the, and I suppose they're mostly connected to the realm they are in. So the fire realm, I suppose, has like air conditioning yeah. and the water yeah. realm is, you know, water things. Uh, so yeah, that's... So I, I am feeling though that there's a, that the, that there are mechanics, um, but they're they're fairly few. So that that, that there's a set of um, consistent mechanics. You walk, you release souls, um, but there's actually not that many of them. Yeah, so <laughs> you win. Uh... Yeah. So few mechanics is down and poor. Consistent mechanics is up at satisfactory. I think we're gonna go just between them yeah. all right so let's move on now to the next category which is talking about um fulfilling the brief so first is level design and then is tutorial so within revel within level design we've got goals risks reward and pacing so i can definitely feel um the goals risks rewards here right so do you stick around in one realm oh how did you win uh, so I unlocked all the golden oh, gates. Unlocked all the realms, huh? Yeah, just as it says in the uh, title, open all golden gates. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So, um, so I guess I can see I can see your goals to get to all the 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 realms. The risk is that if you if you leave a realm unattended for too long, you might lose it, and you yeah. have to build a bridge back to it. Or in, um, in this case, the bridges remain, but your ability uh, starts diminishing, and after a point, you cannot use it. So, for example, in the fire realm, I get the ability to be faster, and it starts going down at some point on the right here. And at some point, it, you lose the ability, but there's still some left in the, uh, like, let's say halfway here, I think. You lose the ability, but still have some uh, of the meter there. Right. Uh, and then if you go back, it just uh, goes up quite fast, quite a bit faster because there's not much to, uh, you know, replenish. Uh, so you lose the ability if you don't go, or if you leave the realm. If you leave the souls. Yeah. Right. Um. So, so there is a goal. We have we have some risks. Um, the rewards here, I guess, there's the reward of of getting all the realms, um, and the reward of clearing a realm is to kind of keep that that power. Yeah. Um. So, I think it's I think it's clear and coherent set of goals, risks, rewards on this one. Okay. And let's talk a little bit about uh, pacing. So <laughs> the tension, the tension definitely rises, right? So at first I was saying, oh, the tension, I was going to say the tension's very ah. really flat. But then when we got to the second level and suddenly you had to go back to the first level, totally had a rise in tension. Now, is it just because the you have to run around between the realms, or does the tension rise in some other way? I I think it's the fact that yeah, uh, your realms start getting uh, I guess more souls 
get there and you have to go back to take them back. So I think I think it's the tension clearly rises over time. And I guess the question is, does the tension rise over time in a coherent pattern? Um, and I think it, I think the pattern is, is that as you hit a new realm, you just have that many more realms to go take care of again and again and again. Yeah. Um, so I think it is a, a coherent pattern, but I'm not entirely sure that it's well balanced in this case. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I mean, definitely there is the fact that at the beginning, uh, if, for example, I uh, free the Earth Realm and then go to the Fire one, uh, it doesn't immediately start uh, with souls back in the Earth Realm. So it gives me some time to get used to it and uh, go to the Fire Realm. And then, you know, a screen pops up and says, Oh no, your uh, Earth Realm is under attack or something. Although I'm not sure why it isn't showing right now. You have my apologies for the dog. Um, <laughs> we're all under control again. <laughs> so I think um, sticking to the end of pacing here, um, that it is that is rises over time in a pattern. Uh, so we'll we'll call we'll we'll call that. Um, Although I'm final... not sure there's so I've been playing for you know five minutes or something after I restarted, and you can see that I've had the earth realm and the fire one for quite oh, a bit yeah. and they've remained. Why haven't they got down now? They did the last time. Yeah, I think it's maybe something to do with restarting the game, not maybe uh, setting some variables. And... Uh-oh. Did we find a bug? Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Okay. Well, we're going to we're just going to keep playing and we're just going to look away for a little bit on this one. So we'll talk about tutorial design. Um, so in this case, there was the brief tutorial that actually started just to start the game, where you tried to click start, um, and then, oh, actually we have to type start. So that was actually really cute. I, I enjoyed that the tutorial was was built all the way on the like game start scheme. Exactly. Um, and, and the menus as well are, you know, uh, typing, and you have to type continue or restart or a quit. Yeah. Yeah, they've totally been consistent here, haven't they? Um, and then I think they the other part that I that I also enjoy not so much cutscenes, uh, they're sort of cutscenes where where you know you get to you've opened up a new realm and it says, "Yeah, you opened up a new realm." And then when when lost souls are appearing in the old realm, they kind of cut you away from your play and they say, "By the way, we need to teach you this." I mean, I'm mm. I'm okay with that. Like, it's it doesn't feel like it's actually breaking the play all that much. Um, oh, you won again. Very good job. Yeah. And so, yeah. I think the only thing that I'm I'm going to say that is not necessarily done through this um, is. Um, It's, um, I, the, the level design, I mean, I guess if we, if we include that very first, you know, type start to enter, um, there's not that, it's not a huge amount of level design, right? So once you, once you enter the map, that's it. You do learn a few more things through play, like the, the lost souls in another realm can make it unstable, um, but we don't, we don't actually gain that much extra information or tutorial through this. Mm. Yeah. Um, so, but I think otherwise really well done that, that, that it explains as it does, it makes you do those behaviors and those are integrated with play. Um, so let's move on to uh, our next piece, which is looking at the design element, the core dynamic. I haven't actually looked to see what they said yet. Any, any thoughts on what they might've said? Well, I personally know they told me in the lab when I played the game, but uh, it 
because it's supposedly a territory acquisition. Yes. And yeah, it does feel, you know, you have one territory and then you go to the other, but oh no, the first one is under attack or, and I have to go back. So yeah, it definitely yep. has that. Yeah. So, so I think, I think we do have, um, Oh, okay. So yeah, you can see, uh, the screen that tells you that, uh, realm is under yep. the first time. So actually yeah, it's not so broken. I, I guess that time I was really lucky. You just playing so well somehow, <laughs> huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so so if we if we talk about our core dynamic here, um, so I think that there is a clear core dynamic that is supported by the primary mechanics. Um, I don't know that we have an integrated set of mechanics because we have so few mechanics in this case, but but the ones that we do have definitely are supported by um, by that primary mechanic, uh, by that by the mechanics. Yeah. All right. And then finally is our feedback category. So let's see what they said for feedback. We got feedback about the audio system. Um, they were thinking about clips saying words and the player got close, but to make sure that it wasn't muddy, they just decided not to do that. Um, they did to make sure the core dynamic was clear. So they emphasized um, realm acquiring, such as the relationship to Carmen realm and the open the golden gates. They received feedback about the mechanics. Um, so they made sure moving around and typing feels good to the player. I think they did that part really well. And the fourth feedback was about adding some more fun to the pace of the game. So um, depending on the player's performance, the difficulty of the next wave of souls is calculated. Oh, and this number constantly changes depending on the player uh, and their their performance. Huh. Um, so it's not too hard. That's that I I appreciate that, and I wonder if that's part of why your souls in that la in that second round. Um, that your realms seemed a little more stable. Maybe you were actually playing a little more poorly, huh? Maybe. <laughs> um, and then the final feedback is to give players more options. So um, they they respond to that by having more options with typing so the player can start the game, build bridges, and open different kinds of gates with the typing mechanic. Uh, and so that one, I actually think the feedback was to give the player more options, and they I don't know that they actually addressed that one particularly well. Um, because they doubled down on that typing mechanic, which is great, it's consistent, but um, you want to be able to do more, right? Maybe, for example, another you could have introduced another mechanic and you have the choice of getting to a realm that doesn't actually help you to get to the final realm, but gives you a word blaster, so that every time there's a set of souls that say fan, because there was a few of them that like, there were five souls around you at one point that was said fan, um, if you typed it once, it got all of them. If you were holding the special amulet of of typing, mm. right? Yeah. Um, so I think that would have been a good response to that final feedback. I think the fourth feedback, they they nailed it, and then some. Um, they did great on the feeling of of your user uh, intuitive controls. Um, yeah. So I think across the board on this, the feedback was was well articulated. I would say that about half of the pieces were addressed um, successfully. Um, and there was some interpretation of that. So so I think that we're um, we're gonna go with that they were absolutely successful in their feedback interpretation. All right, I think that ends uh, today's or this particular game. Yeah. Next to. All right, on, on to the to next. The, yeah. Now we've got SR Dungeon. And I suppose we start with a tutorial. Let's see. Yeah, let's. Uh, oh, okay. So there's a timer immediately here that I see. Uh, press okay. E to interact with the sign key. Sign. Welcome to the tutorial level of SR Dungeon. So, oh boy, I feel welcomed. <laughs> so I can, I think, oh, click here to go to the next. Yeah, um, 
speech bubble or whatever. So there's these signs are here to guide you through each of the following rooms. Ahead of you okay. is a door. Doors can come in many forms. Most of you look like the one ahead of you, quite a big one. But they may be different sizes. Uh, okay, so hidden. So they have some hidden ones as well. Uh, for your first change, I want you to try moving around the WSD keys. So there's Ooh. there was a really nice small menu here, which you know had the four directions, and once yeah. you pressed one, it ticked and showed you that you already went that way. Uh, once you're ready, try heading through the door. Okay, let's see. Oh, the camera is really nice, smooth. Oh, that's nice. Uh, congrats, you're now completely compatible <laughs> with video games. Okay, that's a bit... Ah, you're not completely. Okay, sorry. <laughs> now to introduce one of the core mechanics of our game, moving blocks. Uh, blocks can be pushed using your body, or you can pull them towards using the space key. See the panel on to your right. Or, ah, those things, okay. Putting a heavy object on them will cause them to glow and power nearby doors. Uh, okay, so go push a block them. onto those block-like. Okay, ah, okay, yeah. And let me try to pull... Oh. Can I... Okay. Oh! Oh, okay. I was trying to pull it from closer, like here, but it doesn't work. It has to be a bit further, and it shows you like a link. Yeah. Which, yeah, uh, once you know that, it's quite actually easy. Okay, and let me try pushing this one. Oh, and those little circles lit up blue. Good yeah, job. that's really nice. All right. So nice we've learned start. a few things. I can't remember what they are, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, well done again. Uh, these are control wheels. Okay. Use the body to rotate them. And most of the time they will activate the nearest door when pointed towards them. Okay. However, control wheels can also have effects further away across the map. To find the correct orientation, look for clues or hints in your surrounding area. Give this once a go, point them both towards the door to open it. Okay. Let's see. There's hinges. Those hinges are arrows up on that gate door. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, that, uh, the sound is really nice. It's like uh, sound design. Yeah, he, yeah. I've heard a lot of different sounds, actually, depending on how you interact, like the stone sliding. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Almost there. Let's talk about how to complete levels. Every level has a final door, in this case, with the one in front of you. I mean, it doesn't look very final, but <laughs> uh, that's not a... The final door will always require a key hidden somewhere in the map. Huh, okay. You need to use your spatial reasoning skills. <laughs> cough, cough. Uh, that's our core <laughs> dynamic. <laughs> okay. Let's to find the key. I don't even have to read the game notes. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I wonder what the core dynamic is. Uh, for, <laughs> for some extra change, each level will also have a timer. Okay, you can try to complete them as quickly as possible. Or you can spend more time exploring the map, maybe finding some items to reduce your time. Oh, okay. So open that chest, grab the key, and let's go. Attack with the chest using the E key. Yeah, okay. Uh, let me actually go this. These are go tinted urns. I keep an eye out of them throughout each level. If you interact with them, they take 10 seconds away. Ah, if you're trying to go for any sort of speedrun, they're worth searching for. Okay, let me... Aha, uh -huh, so ah, you, you press yep. E to interact with them and they take, yeah, okay, 10 seconds. Anything and what about here? that chest? Yeah, okay, so that should contain the picked up key. But mm, once you pick it up, there is no... You know, there's not like an icon showing you you have a key or something, which might no. be... Okay. 
that will be complete. And I suppose now we can go to the level select. And yeah, let's start with the first level. Oh, wow. Okay. This is an actual puzzle now, okay. Oh, goodness. Maybe I'm going to start on the yeah. marking criteria while you puzzle through this. So we're going to go back originally to our um, quality marks, which include presentation and meaningful play. Within presentation, we're going to talk about audio, graphics, and information design. So we've already heard some nice audio in terms of each of these different interactions make a very nice sound. Is there a background music to this? I can't quite hear it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is. It's very so because I lowered the volume, but there yes. is definitely, and, and it fits uh, it, nicely. It, it fits correctly, yes? Yeah. So I think in this case, um, complementary and appealing effects and music. Yeah, yeah, it's... Uh, All right. So let's move on or back up then to graphics. So I think in this case, we've got consistent, effective, and appealing graphics. Everything was used out of that same asset pack. And, uh, yeah. um, and, and it's cute, right? I mean, this is, you're looking around a world that kind of makes sense for, for um, uh, wandering around exploring. Yeah, and the camera work is really nice because it, yeah. you know, it pans in very nicely and it's smooth. So I really like that because you don't really see a lot of games that do that. Yeah. So I think uh, the final piece is information. So interestingly, I think we have a most information as shown place as opposed to all. So we have that timer, which is good. Um, and we've got the little level one, and there's a box on the left, left that says use key, Find you know, key all this. And, yeah. Yep. The and we've got a sign that you can interact with, but where's the key? Do we have a key? Did we pick up a key? How do yeah, we know we it, picked up the key? Yeah. And Something maybe, so simple. Yeah, maybe I'm nitpicky, but uh, if you go to a, towards a thing that you can interact with, for example, this sign, uh, you know, it's not necessarily obvious immediately you can interact with it. Uh, so maybe like a small pop-up with the letter E yeah, or something like yeah. that. That Agreed. would be really helpful. So I'm going to say that most key information is here, but I think we've found at least two cases now. It would be It would be nicer to have other things as well. All right, let's talk about meaningful play, which includes mechanics, controls, and bugs. I don't think we've seen any bugs yet, and I actually think that the game is reasonably complex. Yeah, it feels uh, complex with the mechanics of movement and pushing and the rotating of these wheels and as well as the camera, which yep. I know myself and... is quite a complicated thing. Yeah, and so that kind of then feeds you started us towards the intuitive and smooth usable controls so you, you've actually complimented the camera work a few times how do the rest of the controls feel intuitive smooth and usable yeah yeah absolutely it's uh you know it feels perfectly fine you can move around and the e key and the space bar feel nice with the yeah yeah. All right, and then let's talk about the mechanics that they've put on offer for us. So let's see. You can go talk to a sign. You can turn a wheel. It opens a door. You can take time off of your timer by interacting with golden urns. You can find a key to open a door. Uh, Am I missing? Oh, you can move stones. You can yeah, push pushing. and pull stones. Yeah. Have I missed anything else? Uh, not for now. I don't think so. Yeah. So I think I think they have a set of control, a set of mechanics, um, and I think that they are um, consistent at least in the exploration. I think that they are complementary. That you can work through using these different things to, to open a door. Um, I'm not entirely sure, given this though, that I'm I'm at a wide set of complementary. 
Um, they all feel fairly fairly similar in terms of push pull walk around um, as you explore. Mm. Yeah, they're quite closely knit together in a way because yeah they all play into each other. Yeah. So let's go talk about fulfilling the brief. We've got level design, which includes goals, risk, rewards, and pacing. Um. So, goals, risks, rewards. Uh, hmm. Our goal is to get through the level. What's a risk here? And what's a reward? Well, yeah, that's now the hard part because risk, I don't feel like there's... Uh, I, I guess the only thing is the time taken but that doesn't really bother me it, right now because I just want to complete the level and have fun. And the yeah. timer is just there to, you know, for people who want to speedrun, I suppose. I I agree. I'm not really seeing a lot of risks or rewards in this case. And, and some of this is, I mean, some of this is a little difficult, right? That it is... Um, it's very it's set up very much as an exploration piece and and at some point you just have to puzzle it out but you could imagine that there's a risk and a reward so a risk would be um you find that there's a map or you know like there's a way to a scroll do you open the scroll knowing that uh it would tell you how to solve one part of the puzzle or but then it would i don't know increase your time this amount Right, mm. that's a, that would be a risk and a reward that matches the goal. But I don't know that we have um, any other risks or rewards in this. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, I think it's mostly uh, no, not a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And then moving the same problem kind of goes into pacing. Um, pacing feels very flat to me in this game. Hmm. I'm. Yeah, I suppose the levels do become more complicated in that sense. Yes. Uh, and there's, you know, the previous level you only had one wheel and just one block but now it's actually two wheels and you actually have to think and uh, and yeah it's in that sense it it, it is getting a bit uh, more Harder. yeah yeah those blue letters have migrated in the screen i wasn't paying enough attention to see what you touched to make them move did you notice that? Which one? Oh. Go left. There's blue. Ah, those they... ones. Yeah, the... they've moved. See them up there now? Yes. And I think, I can't tell if they've changed um, huh, I... the letters themselves. I think they were there. Huh. Yeah, that so... might be some something small that they've done. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'm trying to com to complete this because there was a small hint uh, in on the sign. Uh, it took a while to figure out. This one even more so. Here's your hint. I finished making this level at 5.45. So I've tried to point the cogs in that, you know, 5. 45, I think. Uh, that's 45, and that's 5 o'clock, so... So, I'm going to go on to tutorials at this point. I think, actually, they did a very nice tutorial um, that was a gradual explanation of gameplay and controls that was fully aligned with play. Like, they, they taught it while showing you that it was a puzzle that you had to solve. Um... 
and you couldn't move on in various places because they had the keys and the gatekeepers between the doors before you learned how to turn the wheel or move the stones. Yeah. So let's go to their core dynamic, which is... Uh, spatial reason, yeah. Spatial reasoning, yeah. Um, yep. I, they agree, I agree, you agree, we all agree that this is a spatial reasoning game. Um, and it is a clear core dynamic uh, that's supported by the integrated set of mechanics. Isn't it? Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, de definitely there's the whole movement of, you know, pushing and pulling the blocks. The pulling and, and, yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to read through their feedback while you keep trying to solve this. Um, in the first iteration of their game's design, there was no motivation to play. We were encouraged to come up with some method of motivating the player to continue playing. For example, risk reward system. So in response to this, they developed the timer system. In each level, a timer will count up, keeping track of how long it's taking to complete the levels. Uh, we also thought about intrinsic motivation, another important source of engagement for the player. So uh, they focus on developing the main mechanics really well so they can be combined in interesting ways, which I think they've done that very well. I think I'm less enamored with their solution to add in a timer in to make you motivated to play this. Um, mm, yeah. I don't think that that answers the risk reward problem. Yeah, so, yeah definitely. Because uh, yeah. as I say, I feel like the timer is there, but I don't really mind it because it doesn't really, even if it goes to infinity, I'm still, you know, it yeah. just means that I haven't really done the puzzle, but yeah. Yep. So another piece of feedback they received is the game uh, needed ways to support multiple different play styles. At first, there's only one way of playing the game, which is to complete the levels at whatever speed you wanted and no reward for doing it different ways. In response to this, we further developed the timer system so that the user has two ways of playing the game. They can just try and complete the levels as quickly as possible or explore the map with the gold urns that take time off the score. Um, yeah, I mean, that was that was a great feed. Like, you heard the feedback, you implemented it. I don't think it was entirely successful, actually, in the game itself because... Um, the the ratio of gold earns to the amount of exploration that you need to do to solve mm -hmm. the puzzle, or at least we needed to do to solve the puzzle, isn't isn't quite balanced. But I think it was a good attempt. Um, two and three are the best examples, right? So we were told that in implementing these new features, we had to make sure we maintain our core dynamic. As with the ideas we brainstormed in the feedback session, we risked changing the core dynamic to a more confused mix of racing, survival, collection, and spatial reasoning. And so... Um, the reason the timer takes up instead of down is um, they just wanted, they didn't want to make the user have to restart if they weren't fast enough um, because then it would feel like a racing game. So good mm. job there. Yeah, yeah. Well thought through. Um, and they, they decided not to include other mechanics such as enemies or doors. Yes, very well, because then it, it fit better into survival or fighting or destruction. Um, so I think they did a really good job actually at... Um, not adding in the kitchen sink and changing that core dynamic. So I think in this case, great job thinking about um, how to stay true to your core dynamic. I think um, good reasoning, maybe not necessarily implementation about um, different play styles. I'm not a big fan about that motivation with that timer. And I think we rely, you rely a little too heavily on the timer, but otherwise I do think that the feedback was absolutely dressed and the changes were successful. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty. I think that concludes our last game for batch four of the comp six, uh, three, two, one, eight. Um, let's play session. Yeah.